Hello, my name is Sarah Taz. Welcome to this collective reading. I'm so excited to have you here today. If you want any of my personal services, I do personal private readings online. You can do virtual as in video, or you can do FaceTime. Information is all down below. Outside of that, I also offer Reiki virtually, and I also offer private yoga virtually. So if any of that sounds yummy to you, reach out. I would love to work with you. Let's go ahead and get into this reading. So this reading kind of happens for the moment. And that's what the energy feels like. It's like nothing's happening, lollygagging. It's just kind of like meh, meh, meh. And then all of a sudden, like, whoa. And all these messages just come in. All these, like, it's like you get messages, you get phone calls, you get people noticing you. It's just this whole different vibe, 444, okay? So I'm also hearing 555. So change is on the horizon. So I wrote down a bunch of messages. I'm going to read you them and then we'll get into the actual reading. Let me have a sip of my drink real quick. 101. Okay, take a breath. All right, let's dig in. Okay, so I was hearing a few different songs. The first song that I heard was Replay by Ayaz. I don't know how to say it, but Shadi is like a melody in my head that I can't, I don't know. I don't know the words, but I listened to it. I remember it from years ago, and it's about a love a special someone in someone's life. This person wants to write them symphonies. They want to do everything for this person. They want to make them feel special. They want to make them feel loved. They want to let them know that they support them and that they are there for them and that they would do anything for them. And then I was also hearing in my head, rent free in your head. So it's like whatever this connection is, it's constantly in your head because you're just like so in love and engulfed by this yummy energy that it's all you think about. Nextly, I was hearing Lose Control by Missy Elliott. Make me lose control. Okay, so once again, someone makes you lose control. Someone makes you want to be free. Someone is encouraging you to be more authentically you and it makes you want to dance and it makes you want to jump up and down. It makes you want to have a very different vibration about you we're just like popping and locking and dropping and enjoying your energy and enjoying your life so from there i was then hearing mother may i and it got me down this path of thinking about games that you play as a child so i was hearing mother may i i was hearing duck duck goose i was thinking about kickball i was thinking about like i forgot what it's called but that game where you guys link arms and then you run across and see if you can run through the arms that are locked and it's like a barricade right and if you can break through then you get to join the side or something so it's something i'm getting all these different games that you've been playing so it's like an up leveling so it's like this is where you start then you can move to this game next and then you move to this game next and then you it's like an olympics or it's like an event where someone's in front of you waiting for you to hand them the batons and then they can run next and then it is a spiraling energy so what i was getting from this is like mother may i it's asking for permission right three through three it's when you're younger you're wanting advice you're wanting validation then you decide to make decisions on your own duck duck goose duck 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 goose i want this right and then it goes into kickball where you're up to bat, like you are ready, you're the one that's about to kick that ball and you have the option to kick it wherever you're gonna kick it and then potentially run all of the spots to have a home run. And so the energy from there is like going from kid games, going from young, naive, like asking permission, not really having your own opinions or voices to home run, adulthood, I make decisions, I feel confident in what I do and I can choose to hit all those bases and make the way home. Find my stability, find my crowd, find my people, find the people that I wanna celebrate with, right? So then I moved into this different energy where I was thinking about Katniss Everdeen and I was thinking about the games that she's in and it's and I've actually been hearing this for a few days where it's like, may this ever be in your favor or whatever. Um, may the games ever be in your favor and it's it that's the energy it's like how are you gonna approach the games how are you gonna approach this life that is a game you can think of it as like a video game like how are you gonna get to the next level how are you gonna move on to this next thing 
and it even makes me think of Sims a little bit. But we go from she gets her, you know, name drawn or whatever, and she has to go do this game to win and survive, right? You have to win to survive. And so there goes like this energy of, okay, well, I'm only gonna be here to survive and that, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be constantly in a state of fear. I'm gonna be in a fight or flight energy. And it's like, well, you know, I've been in this lack energy my whole life, so I might as well just stay in that lack energy. And it's, it's, there's this transition of confidence and growth that comes within this space of learning through the games and learning through the experiences and learning that you actually have opinions and that you have goals and that you have morals and you have different versions of you that you didn't know that you had. So you're moving from that into learning to kind of trick the system intellectually where it's like you're it's like mind over matter. So it's not it's not what it looks like and it's not what it seems like and it's not other people's projections of what they want it to look like, right? It's you are the movie director of your own movie. It's not like you're stuck in a movie doing a cast or being in the cast and you know acting out the parts. It's no, you're actually the one on the outside of the movie filming it and deciding, okay, this is going to be what's happening. So we're gonna do photos from here, we're gonna do videos from here, we're gonna have you run from here to here, and we're gonna do this and this and this, and you're the one that's in charge of your own movie. So mind over matter is what I'm getting there. So learning how to trick your mind, learning how to trick your fears, learning how to block off negative energy, learning how to shut off the projections that are not even your feelings and make space for you to decide how you actually feel and what you want out of this life. Then I moved into, will you notice what's hidden in plain sight? Which then he made me think about planes and how there's the plane, like, you know, ground. And then there's the plane that flies. And then it, I started drawing arrows to kind of create 717, this plane. I was about to draw a plane and I wrote me and then I was writing a more afterwards, just kind of randomly came. And I was thinking like me, me a more, like my love or who I love or who I'm wanting to support or who's supporting me. And then it gave this energy of, is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it Superman? I don't know. Is it you? Like, <laughs> who are you? What are you? Are you one thing? Are you another thing? Are you multiple things? Are you multi-dynamic? Are you a multi multi-dimensional being who has lots of different versions of yourself that you even shock yourself sometimes because you didn't realize that you could be this way or that you want to be this way or whatever because your mind is ever changing and ever growing and you are opening up yourself in spaces that you never expected that you could be right so new opportunities are coming in new people are coming in phone calls are coming in emails are coming in people want you and you want people, right? <laughs> There's this like reciprocity energy of finally things are moving full circle. You've done all the things, you've learned all the lessons and finally that home run is happening. So those are all my spirit messages. Let's go ahead and get into the actual reading now. <sighs> 8.39, okay. So let's see how you feel today. Spirit guides, ancestors, gods, goddesses, all in right light, please come to this space, allow me to tap into this energy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keeping them safe, loved, and protected, and keeping me safe, loved, and protected. Wow, it feels like a very refreshing energy. Like, I, I really feel like I can breathe, like, really open, crisp air. Like, that's what it feels like. Maybe something is going to happen when it's the cooler months, 909. Maybe in September. September 9th, maybe. These cards just all want to be flying out. It's like a lot of opinions, a lot of people have something to say. But I think that you're being noticed and that's that's what's happening here. It's like you're going to get a lot of different energies around you because there's there's something about you that's drawing people in, which is why you need to keep your vibrations high up, liberated, stay liberated and know your worth. So make sure that you're not just accepting anything, right? Make sure that you are remembering the process, all the different experiences you've gone through, 
and remember to keep your energy high up and your vibrations at a level where you can stay at an intellectual, right? Where you know your worth, you speak your truth, you share openly, authentically, you are emotionally intellectual, you know how to problem solve, you know how to integrate the things that you've learned and turn them into whatever you're going through now, right? You know how to think outside the box. You know how to alchemize situations and experiences and turn the, the tables around when people wouldn't expect that of you, okay? Let's see what people are expecting of you, actually. Let's just tap into that. What do people expect of this group? What do people expect of this? It's funny, because like normally I would say collective, but for some reason I feel like saying group. I don't think it's as big of a group. It's something that feels... smaller but really substantial 11 11 is this kind of energy of like a small group you go you learn lessons you do the things you talk about certain things it could even be like a therapy group or like like-minded individuals like a book club of some sort where people all come together and they gather because they're attracting attract attracts attracts <laughs> attracting attract, attract it's like you attract what you're putting out there and so it might be something that's like slow growing energetically, but you're finding the right people and you're finding the right communities and the right people are finding you. So attract attracts like, right? So discourage. People think that you're gonna get discouraged and that you're gonna get pained by things going slow they think that you're going to be disappointed or they expect things to go bad for you. <laughs> they expect that you're going to eventually get irritated. What else do people expect of you? Frustration. Interesting. And how will you transmute this energy? I just saw at peace. How will... by distracting them. <laughs> so I don't feel like you're gonna actually be distracted. I think that you're gonna be making moves that are going to distract people and be like, what? Like, they went in that direction or they are doing this now? Like, what, what happened? Like, yeah, at peace and strong. Whatever you're doing is confident, right? And it's something where you're gonna be distracting people because people expect you to fail, <laughs> 1313, which, you know, it's not fun to hear that, but people expect you to fail. People expect you to need them. People expect you to be codependent, right? <sighs> Maybe out of confusion of like past experiences possibly. And so it's like a expectation of the past repeating itself, but you're in this place where you're at pure peace and you accept the past for what it is and you understand that the past does not define you, okay? So you're not in a hopeless energy and you're not letting fear guide you either. You're being playful, you're being courageous, you're being creative, you're enlightened in your energy. You feel strong and independent and intuitive and you feel like you can trust the process and that you believe in magic and you believe that anything is possible if you play the game right. <laughs> I mean, the game thing just seems to be part of this. So, let's see. We're going to do some tarot. This is the Everyday Witch. All right, so how are you going to work through this neediness? Ten of Pentacles. You're choosing you. You're choosing to have all the things that you've ever wanted, 14, 14. You're choosing balance. You're choosing the family. You're choosing the life that you've dreamed of, the money, the house, the garden, the farm, the animals, the whatever your version of the best life that you could possibly have. 
you're choosing that as your focal point, which is saying goodbye neediness. I no longer am in a codependent energy. I choose me and I choose to be independent in my choices and in my decisions. Okay. What irritates people about you? <laughs> that you're not afraid to have new beginnings. You're not afraid to choose different directions, that you're not afraid to pick up a map and go. Okay. What disappoints people about you? I'm feeling in my head that you're grounded, like that you have boundaries, basically. That you choose to have the life that you want. I'm hearing that you choose to eat the cake, too right? That you choose sweetness, that you choose love, that you choose to have boundaries, that you choose to live from a place of love, that you choose to be compassionate to yourself and other people while also not backing down from what you want out of this life. That disappoints people because maybe you have to leave people behind sometimes. Okay. Why? Hmm. I was about to say, why do people feel pained by you? And I'm hearing jealousy. Okay. Jealousy because you're making pure connections, because you're making soulful connections where you're connecting with people at a heart-centered level, where it feels very intentional, very divinely guided, and it feels very purposeful. So your crowds that you might be in might be in a they might be smaller, right? Your friend groups might be smaller, but they might be super super important. Whereas a lot of people, you know, they just are around people to be around people but you don't look at friendships or connections that way. You look at them in a way that's healthy, where everyone is reciprocal, where everyone feels like they're getting something out of it. And if you're not, then you move away from it and you're not afraid of that. 707, okay? So what's paining people is that, once again, you're not afraid to cut people off. And also that makes people jealous because they're like, wow, I wish that I could do that or, I wish that I wasn't afraid to do that because there's this underlying fear of people being like, oh my gosh, how, how, you know, how do you have faith that you're going to make friends or make connections or find the celebrations once again, if you cut certain things off, people, experiences, jobs, you know, whatever it may be. It's like, well, you don't really know what's going to happen in the future. Four of cups, right? <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. Things may come in for you and you're like, nah, not, not interested in that. We don't want that. But you can eventually find what you're looking for because you're being patient and you're being tempered in your energy. So you're not afraid to allow time to do its thing. Okay. <sighs> what makes people feel discouraged by you? Four of Wands, I feel like there's just like nitpicky things that people feel about you. Ow, I almost just got a paper cut. So it's like little things where it's like, oh, that hurt, right? It's this energy of maybe you don't see eye to eye with everybody or not everyone agrees with your way of doing life. It could be witchy, you could be, you know, spiritual in some way you could be just someone who is an outside of the box thinker does things differently isn't afraid to speak up about life and isn't afraid to just be different right to not be stuck in a box and so there may be things that people are like "Ooh, like i don't like that about you or i don't agree with that and so there's like nitpicky things that discourage people because they're like they can't get past one thing that they don't like or that they're like not sure about and so it discourages them and they're like, yeah, I don't want to be around you because of one thing or like little things that don't actually mean anything, but it's like closed minded energy. And people only are like super nitpicky when they don't like themselves. <laughs> that's really, that's how I'm feeling. It's like, you're only going to be super judgy about other people when you're like not totally con content in your energy. And I keep saying like, and I don't normally say like, so it's this energy of filling the space, filling the gaps, being uncomfortable in other people's presences. And then it's, 
it's like this energy of knowing that you could have anything that you want. You could be around anyone that you want. Three of Wands. You can have anything in this life that you want if you just set your mind to it. If you choose to go in any particular, any particular direction. So that discourages people because it makes them think about their own life. And they're like, yeah, I'm not doing that for myself. I'm not speaking up for myself. So I'm jealous that you are. I'm jealous that you're the magician. <laughs> I'm jealous that th this is how people are looking at you. They're like, I'm jealous that they're able to make, you know, lemons turn into a beautiful lemon cake, right? They're, they're jealous that you're able to turn anything into magic if you choose to do so. And it may be something, I feel my shoulders just like inching towards my ears where it's like making people feel like, oh, like almost suffocating because they're like, I wish that I could do that, right? And so that's the frustration is like people just seeing themselves as less or just not being very open-minded. And they're always thinking about the downfalls. They're always thinking about the things that have gone wrong, the depression, the whatever. And you're not 2112. You're not someone who wants to sit and be in a mellow, sad, yucky space by staring at the cups that have fallen, that have spilled. You'd rather look at the cups on the table and be like, all right, well, what are we going to do with this? We got two cups here. They're open. They're ready for opportunities. I'm ready to drink them. I'm ready to experience them. I'm ready to celebrate them. So you you always have more of a optimistic mindset, whereas people that maybe you've had to leave behind or family or friends or whatever that maybe don't see eye to eye with you anymore, don't see eye to eye with you because your vibrations have changed you're at a higher vibration where you're more optimistic you're more positive you see the gratitude the light the sunshine the yummy energy <sighs> yeah and i just got distracted by looking at this distracted card i'm gonna read you this card distracted in today's world we are in a in inundated with a sensory overload of information and there are more are many distractions as a result our natural circadian rhythm is challenged and it may be difficult to truly be present in ourselves all too often this perpetuates in us staying busy to avoid dealing with difficult emotions smoky quartz interesting I used to have a smoky quartz. I lost it. I think it's in a plant <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so it's giving this energy of like dealing with different, trying to avoid difficult emotions by living a 3D world with distractions, covering things up, avoiding things, staying busy so you don't have to think about the things that are not going so good in your life or just not talking about things, which then things when you don't talk about them spiral and get stuck and sticky and gross and your energy just becomes really stagnant and negative because you haven't moved that energy around and you're someone that's like yo i'd rather be liberated my energy even if it's sticky and stucky and not so fun to work through you'd rather work through it you'd rather work through the emotional stuff to see the greatness in this world so you have found a way to have tools in your toolbox to help you feel more enlightened and more empowered in your skin so that that's something queen of pentacles that makes you really powerful people know that you're powerful they see it whether or not you see it people see that you are very very abundant mentally emotionally maybe physically as well and if you're not yet, you know, if you don't necessarily have money in your pocket yet, you will. Because this is the mindset of you. You don't give up. You will give up on things that are not worth your time. But you don't give up on the things that are so powerful and fruitful for you. Emotionally, mentally, physically, all of the above. You know what's worth your time. And you know your worth. And you know what's going to make you feel happiness and sacred yummy spiritual vibrational energy that allows you to feel prosperous and open and receptive to the energy around you hmm. yeah you're not afraid of these leaves of faith 
flying off the handle. That's what I'm hearing. I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy now. I hope you're happy when something, something, something. So wicked. Uh, the musical wicked. You might be into musicals or you might be just a wicked kind of person where the word wicked to me is funny because it's like people could look at the word wicked and be like, that person's wicked like a witch. And then also similarly, the energy could be like, wow, they're so wicked and cool and rad, right? So it just it, perspective is everything. Perspective is everything. I feel like that's how the world runs, right? Opinions perspective, definitions, and it's almost like you make your own definitions and you're like, all right, this is what it is. And I'm hearing this is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. <laughs> okay. All right. So you have attention to detail and you have pride in the things that you do. And that doesn't mean that you're egotistical. It just means that you take pride in what you do because you know your worth and you're not going to lessen your worth for others. We have cause and effect. You have clarity on how things work in this world, right? If you make this action, then this is gonna come out of it. If you don't take this action, then this is not going to come out of it or something else will come out of it. You are your own muse. You're not afraid to shine in your own light and be your own person that you're actually inspired by. And you also might inspire other people by being someone who can always shine bright even in the darkest of times. And I've heard, I've seen a lot of things like recently about delusional people being delusional to manifest and delusional to have the life that you'd like. And I get that in some aspects, but I, th I think delusional is sometimes bad and sometimes really good, right? Do you believe in magic? Do you believe that anything is possible? Do you have faith in something great happening for you and transpiring? And that's just the internal world of like, my heart says, yes, I believe in this. I know it's gonna happen. I feel comfortable, I feel grounded, I feel safe, I feel protected. And I know that if I live my life the way that I'm living it, then I shall have the life of my dreams. And I don't think that's delusional. I think that's actually being mindful and being open and also taking the steps to get you wherever you're going. But the delusional like sitting around doing nothing and not ever setting intentions and expecting something to change, I think that's stupid. <laughs> that's just me personally. And I, I think that there's a lot of energy going around right now where people are getting misinterpreted or getting manifestation misinterpreted where it's like, well, if I just do nothing and I choose to manifest this whatever, then it's going to come to me. And I think that that is not true. You do still have to do work. You still have to set intentions. You still have to kind of plant the seeds and then you can take a break and breathe and be like, okay, it'll come to me when it comes to me. But you have to set the groundwork. You have to root the energy before it can grow, right? Like you don't just go outside and you're like, a tree is gonna pop up right here. Okay, well, how's it gonna pop up? Like, are you gonna plant a seed? Are you gonna nurture the soil? Are you gonna have some water on it? What you gonna do? Because if you just say a tree is gonna show up out of there, like, what? You know, it may not happen unless some random person decides to put a tree there, but you can't live your life expecting other people to do the work for you. Mm. Parenthood and legacy. Interesting, it's all coming together, right? <laughs> biding your time and planning ahead so that this is the thing it's like you're no longer codependent towards other people doing the work for you you're like no i'm living an independent life and i'm choosing this path and i shall do the work because i know that if i do these things then i will be able to you know be happy and have whatever and so you're no longer expecting other people to save you when things go awry astray awry when things go wrong, you're like, no, okay, that's my problem, right? I got, I, it's on me, right? I need to take ownership of the life I'm living and I need to choose to be independent and a grown up and do what I have to do. And you saw like my whole body, my whole posture just completely changed talking about that. So it's, it's this energy of understanding, understanding the course ahead 
understanding that the path might be a little bit wonky, it might be a little bit crazy, and you might need to pull out your GPS here and there and get a little bit of assistance, but you're gonna get there eventually. Okay, let's see. Let's do this deck, see if there's any energies that you're dealing with today. Any energies that this collective is dealing with today. Oh, I love the smell of this deck. It's like smells like cedar, wood, it smells like wood. Okay, we have 11th house friends, like-minded groups, and humanitarian beliefs. Yeah, you're about to find your people. You're about to find your tribe. Stay optimistic. It's coming in. You just might not see it yet, but it is coming in for you. Okay, what is a little bit of advice for this collective in keeping their self-worth high? Staying true to you. Keep yourself in an awakened state. So keep your vibrations high, stay active, make sure that you're moving and grooving and also resting when you need to and be in a state of flow, okay? Renewal and rebirth energy. So not being afraid of a phoenix running, rising from the ashes. I've heard <laughs> running. So, you know, not being afraid to move and groove, right? Run that energy through. And then we have journey. So it is a journey and your self-worth and the way that you view yourself and your way that you talk to yourself is super duper important. So be creative, you know, allow yourself to have self-expression, allow yourself to be more free, allow yourself to have opinions and don't hide yourself behind other people to try to fit in because you're not meant to fit in. All right. Yeah, you can handle any event that comes your way because you are I'm hearing a manipulator but also a manifestator. Manifester. Manipulator, manifester. 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 I'm hearing molding. So you're not afraid to mold things, manipulate things, transmute things to heal is what I'm hearing. Chased. I feel like you're no longer being the chaser. You're no longer forcing things to happen and people are now coming to you because they understand and they see what you're doing. They see that you've weathered a lot of storms in your life and you've gone through a lot of different things and you always come out brighter. I focus on what is working. Yeah. With a steady mind, I am connected to our collective experience. That's the thing is people, people see you. They see you clearly. They see like even if they have judgments of you or whatever, they're like, okay, I see this person really living their life. T not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. And they can see that you are having your life change in front of their eyes. And that's why they're starting to look at you with more mental clarity. Like, ooh, maybe that person is actually pretty smart. Or maybe they're doing something right. Maybe I should follow in their tracks a little bit. I welcome clear vision and inspired action. You have a lot of power within you and people see it. People are listening. You're doing what feels good. And that's the thing is like pe people see that you're doing what is best for you and you're not stressing about it because you know that you're about to receive or that you are receiving the things that you put out there into the universe. You're receiving goodness and grace and yummy energy because you are open to it and you're receptive to it and you've been gardening your garden, right? You are your own best companion. You are your lover. And that means that you're drawing in 
the right loves for you because you are different. You're an outsider, you're an alchemist, you're unique, you're, you're playing in your own field, the ruler of your own land, right? The heart. I'm the liberator. I'm, I'm feeling <laughs> in my head, I'm looking in, I'm visualizing twilight where they're the, vampires are playing baseball out in the field on their own land or whatever right I don't remember exactly but like they felt like they owned the joint you know like they felt liberated to be out playing baseball like just so happy in their energy being themselves sensual pioneering the land right like taking action being the artist being unique being creative and you're not, you're not afraid to gamble, right? Because you're listening to your sacral chakra and your solar plexus, and it's leading the way. Orange and yellow might be really important colors for you right now. You might be healing some mother wounds, and you might be also sharing your story. You might be also healing your heart and you might be learning how to give and receive yeah so sacral chakra let's see if there's anything else that you need to hear today i don't really feel like this is like too lovey-dovey i think it's more work related blind spots okay let's see what your blind spot is what is this collective's blind spot hearing the words words are everything your blind spot is the way you talk to yourself I think your blind spot also might be the fact that you're hiding versions of yourself from other people so people are not getting to see your authentic self maybe maybe you're sharing an, an authentic version of yourself but it might not be the full version creating through ash right you've gone through lots of different things and you have things to share with people <sighs> happiness in our hearts and homes you finally feel safe and loved in your own home of your own body you're not fearing things you're meant to create a web a community a support system to bring synergy and healing into those spaces and what is being hidden is your hidden talent of whatever whatever creative endeavors you do your way of speaking and sharing your storytelling is going to bring people in to your experience so if you're not speaking from the heart people will know okay so the, 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 the question here is, how are you going to start speaking from the heart? A sacred pause. By listening to yourself. By allowing old things to shed. Leaves to shed. Experiences to shed. Letting things go to make space for new things. And to open yourself up to more. The moon. by listening to your intuition, queen of candles, and allowing yourself to be super duper emotional. Um, not emotional like can't control themselves, right? I mean, emotional in sharing by emotion, not being cold, not just being in a masculine energy. We're talking tap into your feminine energy and show people why you are the way that you are and help people feel more comfortable in who they are. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of potions. Help people feel more comfortable in their own skin by tapping into things in a more creative way. Thinking of things creatively, emotionally, independently. I'm almost getting this energy of like an independent film where it's like, yeah, okay, 
it's not like the craziest like major film that's going to be in a movie theater but you can you can put it out on your own you don't have to wait for some big notch on a board to see you and be like okay yeah we'll accept you you're like no i actually accept myself so <laughs> i'll put my stuff out here so you can have the world hi priestess listening to your intuition it's almost giving this energy of like oh waiting around for a gallery to pick you up right to have a sponsor of some sort but then like waiting around does nothing for you but then you're like well actually i'll just like put my stuff in random places small places and eventually you're going to be known for whatever your craft may be and that energy is because you because you accept yourself Ten of lightning because you have the internal flame to achieve anything in this life that you set your mind to and you're strong you're not scared of a challenge okay not a pumpkins you know that abundance is yours it's literally in the palm of your hand okay you're the star you have made it a priority to pay attention to details, to take things slow, to think, to take things mindfully, to think before you do. But now you're meant to show and share. I'm hearing share, show and tell. Okay. You're meant to show and share what you're doing. Cause I think a lot of people don't even know what you're doing. And that's why it's like suspicious. Like that's why people are like, what's going on with so-and-so, right? Because they don't really know what's happening, but you're not sharing everything. But I think it's also mindful to not share everything, right? So you got to be discerning on what you do share. What is the love life of this collective look like? We're going to be done in just a second. I, I'm ready to be done. Covering the truth. So are you hiding who you love? Perspective change. What is this plot twist? Divine intervention. Finding your happy place. It's finally arriving. So what's happening in your love life is that you've been hiding behind a mask, covering up who you are. You've had a perspective change where you feel comfortable being in your own skin now. That's the plot twist is now you're, af you're, you're not afraid to be you. You're not afraid to be unique and different. And so that has allowed you to find a happy place within your own soul, which is the divine intervention to bring you what you've always wanted. And what you've always wanted is about to arrive. What is, what is about to arrive? Feeling giddy after a little chat. Exposing information and spilling the tea. So what's about to arrive is deep connection. A lucky catch. What's about to arrive is something that's more than just surface. It's intellectual and it shocks you. It's deeper than what you expect. Under the love spell, have at it. A lucky catch, taking action, 44. Don't let this love slip away. Moving forward, mm, actually, Moving forward and leaving the old behind. So maybe, maybe you have to slip, let something or someone slip away to make space for something new. Yeah, you do. Because once you do that, you're going to have a growing attraction for the something new. No more toxic connections. That toxic connection could possibly be a twin flame or someone who was meant to teach you a lesson.
What does the future look like? There's hope. So there's hope in the future. You're gonna get what you always wanted. You're gonna get your money. You're gonna get the love life. You're gonna have lots of people and attention, I think, coming towards you. And you're gonna have a lot of decisions to make. Outgrowing people, right? Places and things. And you're gonna realize that some things are full of BS and you're like, yeah, that's not for me. Okay. So the I can't heal you, but I can help you is like, well, if someone comes around that did a lower vibration than you, you're like, I mean, I can help a little bit, but I, I, I can't force you to be a different person. So that's your call is to be like, you know, I will accept this into my life or I will not. Um, and that'll teach them a lesson, right? It'll also teach you a lesson of your own self-worth and boundaries and respect. A blessing that's only meant for you coming through. So something special is coming in that's going to be really mindful. It's going to be very subtle, sweet, sensitive, caring, intentional. Maybe something where you guys end up being parents. Something new. Hmm, interesting. You might find this person in travels or on a trip that you take. All right, let's see. Let's get you an affirmation and then we'll be done. I'm doing what feels good. Yep. Okay, I lied. One more. Lady of the Lotus born. Embodiment is the deepest bliss. My body was made for enlightenment. That's amazing. So you're on the right path. You're doing the right things. You're feeling divinely guided. You feel like there is this bridge between your intuition and spirit and the world that you live on that is all kind of coming together to be your support system to be like, all right, we're going to push you over here. We're going to weave you over here. We're going to send a little wind this way to kind of send you that way, you know, and you're just trusting the process at this point. And you're like, okay, like, let's do it. We're the fools. We're going to be excited because we know greatness is coming in and you can have anything that you'd like in this life. So that is everything I have for you. Thank you so much for being here. If you would like a personal reading with me, if you would also like Reiki with me or yoga, information is down below and I look forward to working with you guys. Thank you so much for being here once again and please like, subscribe, comment, do all the things and I will see you very, very soon. Goodbye.